Okay, hopefully unexpected. Um, where do I want to start? I'll start with Daniel Dennett. Um, I've read a lot of his stuff. Um, I'm actually a cognitive science minor, and I got out an old textbook to look back at uh, the stuff um, I studied about Dennett on uh, a class I had a few uh, a couple months ago. Um, and I've done a lot of videos on um, Douglas Hofstadter, and Douglas Hofstadter and Daniel Dennett are very similar in their approach to the mind and consciousness. And basically, what they both want to do and say is that the mind is nothing but a collection of symbols. And consciousness is these symbols referencing one another. And um, that we can reduce our entire conscious experience to these discrete symbols. And there's a lot of people that attack that idea because they think it's reductionistic. Because it, they think it's only... They think it's, it's a dualism, it's Cartesian dualism, because you're separating the mind, the symbols, from the body or the organism. And then it says no. That's not, that's not a correct, uh, that's not a legitimate um, critique, because all of these representational or symbolic-based um, theories of consciousness are materialistic, and there's no dualism because they're based on the idea that the symbols are actually these physical states of neurons in your brain. And, and I, you know, Dennis says this, that's not a dualism because it's all physical, but I think that is still a dualism because there's, there's this distinction called the form-content distinction. The form is the symbol itself, the exterior symbol, like, uh, you know, the letters right here on this page, mental representation. This, the visual material, physical forms that we see right there, the, the, words, the, the words themselves, that is the form. So that's the symbol that, that uh, the symbols that these representational guys like Dennett and Hofstadter want to say is all that the mind is. But yet, the content is what the word means. And if, it's, and if all there are are forms, symbols, or states of neurons interacting with each other in the brain, where does meaning come from? Where does the interior experience come from? I mean, it's fine to say that there's all this exterior stuff going on because obviously neurons are communicating with one another with electrical, um, chemical signals, and there's there's physical stuff going on up here. But that does not seem to explain the interior experience of consciousness. Now, Dennett's Dennett's science, his objective science, and his way of describing the the mind as a collection of tools that we use to or that, okay, he says there is no user of the mind tools. <clears throat> so in other words, all these symbols that we have and these ways of representing the world are only held together by more symbols. There's no ego using the symbols. There's no you as an individual behind the symbols inside who's experiencing the symbols. There is only the use of the symbols by symbols. So there's a bunch of tools, no users, no user. And I agree with him. And I've written a couple papers on this, actually. Um, the problem is he's not translating that idea of there not being a user of the tools into his personal experience. He has a scientific theory that says there is no self. There is no ego. And yet, he doesn't seem to experientially understand what, what, is that, what, what does that mean. I mean, are you still going to maintain the illusion of being only Daniel Dennett? when you know that there is no user of the tools that your mind employs to get around the world. So then it's an interesting case, because I don't disagree with everything he says. I just think that there's a sort of schizophrenic uh, disassociation between his experience of himself as a living person and his scientific theory of what the mind is. Because for me, consciousness is not something that we can reduce to external symbols or forms. Consciousness involves content. Um, and content is meaning. It's what gives us this internal view of the world and, and these internal experiences of being alive. And a lot of cognitive scientists want to say that all that stuff about, about being alive and having feelings, they're just romanticizing what's really a physical process, and it's all just chemical reactions, sorry.
I don't know about that. Because even if it is all, what we can see of it at least is all these chemical reactions and these manipulations of, of symbols in the brain, that doesn't explain our experience. And we can't just say there is no experience, there is no internal state of consciousness, there is only external manipulations of symbols, because who the hell is thinking of the theories that, that, that that's so? I mean, it seems to be negating this whole half of, of, of human existence, the inside half, and, so, and, and replacing it with only this exterior um, understanding. Um, you know, about what we were talking about, what I was trying to say about evolution on, on, on the, uh, the message board on your video here. Um, I don't think you can understand biological evolution within only the context of biological evolution. Um, especially if, I mean, if you're going to refute, I don't even know what your video is a response to, unfortunately. What is intelligent design? So I think you're trying to say that, I mean, obviously intelligent design is crazy. It's bullshit. But evolution by natural selection doesn't explain anything either. Because evolution by natural selection is biological evolution, which began a couple billion years ago when the first chemicals formed a membrane around themselves and DNA and started reproducing. And that's that's one step in this process of cosmic evolution. And when, but when you look at it from a cosmic perspective, all of a sudden, you can't really refute a creationist. You can say, I think you're oversimplifying what's going on, and I think you're reading too much into the literal explanations of the Bible and, and whatnot, but the story of, that science has given us, the cosmological story of evolution, is more mystical and spiritual and, and mysterious than anything a creationist could ever come up with. It's more radical than, than anything in the Bible, and anything any crazy um, exponent of creationism has ever said, because it's, it, it forces us to transform our experience so much. And I think science is so important, but we can't think that we can explain things by a kind of reductive science, like, like what Dennett sometimes does, because we're, we're, we are almost um, degrading the human experience when we do that, because there's more to human existence than just this physical exterior world. There is an interior experience as well. Um, so, hopefully, uh, yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm just throwing a bunch of stuff out there just to respond to your your general outlook. Uh, but I don't even know what your general outlook is. I wish I would have looked at your other videos and stuff. But um, yeah, if, if you're if you're interested in responding to anything, please do, and uh, I'll take a look at your other videos and maybe make another video that's more focused on something specific that you can respond to. But uh, uh, thanks for listening.